Guys, the clearance rack at Lowe's is no joke. Fifty percent off. Help. Hi guys. So what you saw was me at a clearance rack at my local Lowe's store. And I am so thankful for that because they put that out at the beginning of the season and that is on a constant rotation of plants. And there are so many uh, varieties and such great deals. And I have found so many plants there. I've got a whole bunch of them behind me. And I'm just, I'm so thankful for it because I'm a little frugal fanny. And if I can get a deal anywhere, I will do it. <laughs> and that's just who I am. But I wanted to share with you guys today uh, what, well, first off, what varieties of plants I got and what their issues are and what I personally do to kind of help them rebound. Because these plants are not in the worst shape. They just need a little TLC. You know, they, they have them on these pallets or on these tables. They're all pushed together in, you know, a, a line or whatever. And they just water them overhead every day. And there's really no air circulation getting through to a lot of those plants in the middle. So what happens is, is those uh, leaves never really dry, the soil never really dries, and then the leaves start to turn yellow, the soil gets a little fungal infection, and next thing you know, the plant is looking uh, stressed. So what they do is they go around, they pick the worst ones, put them on the clearance rack, and then I come in and just scoop them all up, bring them back here, and rescue them. And so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how I like to rescue uh, clearance rack plants, and I'm gonna show you everything that I do, because I'm sure there's a numerous, there, I'm sure there's numerous ways of uh, rescuing plants, depending on what the issue is. But I just wanted to share with you uh, some of the things that I do that have worked for me and that are working for me, and some of the things that uh, haven't worked, regardless of what I've done, because some of these plants have been a little too far along, and they just couldn't rebound. They couldn't just get back to where they should be. But let me show you what I picked up first and then I'll go through uh, each variety and what I'm going to do to them or what I think is wrong with them and what I'm going to do to them. And then uh, once I'm done, I'll just take you back around again and show you how everything looks. We're in the backyard and I've set up a little workstation slash laboratory for everything that I need and all of the plants that I've got. And can you believe all of these plants? Oh my God, it's amazing. I even got a little shrub. <laughs> this is, I always forget the name of this thing. Let me see if I can show it to you. A Danica arborvitae. It's a little ball, little globe. I think it gets, I think it's 24, 24 inches high and about 24 inches wide. So a nice a nice size sphere, but it could get a little bit bigger. But you can see it's uh, stressed a little bit. Uh, this side looks really good. And then over here, it's just kind of flattened out a little bit. And it is in its pot a little crooked. So I think if I tip it, it'll eventually uh, straighten itself out and fill in uh, this side. And then let's get over here so I can show you all of these gorgeous plants. I've got, I picked up four Proven Winners Limelight Hydrangeas on the clearance rack. And you can see that they have some crispy branches and a few broken branches here and there. Let me get a little bit better light for you. But they are pushing new growth. There's new buds right there coming up. There's new growth right in here. So really, they just need to be uh, cleaned up a little bit. I will take them all out of their nursery containers and inspect the soil and the roots because sometimes uh, the soil uh, is a little too wet or the roots are stay a little too wet. So we may need to address that, but I'm not sure. I haven't pulled these out of their containers yet. But one thing I think think is happening with some of these plants too is and I'm not sure so if I'm if I'm wrong let me know but I think maybe the soil 
in these containers. I think it, maybe it's geared more towards like the greenhouses where the growers grow them. So when like, especially the big box stores, when they get them, you know, those um, stores are watering them a lot more and the soil is not really having a chance to dry out as much. But, uh, and that's where I think some of the struggle is. But look, oh, look right at the base. There's some new growth here. So that's what I think may be going on with actually a lot of these. I think it's just a very mossy type of soil and it holds on to a lot of moisture, which for the hydrangeas is good because they love it. And I mean, they don't look bad. Some of them even have like they're starting possibly setting some buds. So yeah, crazy. And then here I've got, I picked up a couple of the Pugster Blue Budlias and they're pretty much you know you can see they've kind of dropped their leaves and they're they've got some yellowing here they've got some yellowing up here but overall they're in pretty good condition and i found an entire flat of the white wands veronicas and they do look a little leggy but i actually got these a few days ago and all i did was set them on the driveway in full sun and just watered them in for a few days and they kind of rebounded Right over here, I found a few perfect illusion salvias, and they were pretty much struggling too, and now they're starting to push some new uh, blooms. But this is kind of sort of, this is kind of sort of the condition that I've found a lot of these plants in. You know, they're just struggling. It, they are pushing new growth here, because like I said, I was watering them. But a lot, of, um, a lot of these were pretty much in this condition. And just putting them out in the sun about six inches apart from each other and watering them a little bit, they got some airflow, they got a bunch of sun, they got a nice drink of water, and they've been happy. I even found back here, where is the tag for this one? Let's come around. Oh, here we are. I even found a little lime. <laughs> so I've got four limelight hydrangeas and one little lime. And this is not bad either. It's just got a bunch of crispy leaves on it. Let me pull it out over here. It's just got some crispy leaves on it down at the base, but it is pushing new growth and there's even some buds coming in. So like I said, you can find some great deals there and just with a little bit of TLC and patience. It's amazing what these plants will do. And over here in the cart, this is three flats of the Sweet Romance Lavender. And I have worked on a few of these. I think I lost a couple of them. And then over here, I've got about six or seven that I need to address um, because I think there is some type of fungal issue. I was looking up online and I noticed that it was, I want to say it, I'm going to have to look it up, botrytis, but it's a fungal disease that affects the leaves underneath and it starts to turn them gray. And you can look, let me get in here. You can see how they're kind of dying from the bottom and they work their way up. Let me show you. This is what happens if you leave it unattended. It just kind of dies from the bottom down. Here, let me set this down. So what happens is it's just getting too much moisture. And I think, and this is just my opinion, but I think a lot of these stems are just too close to the soil line and there's no airflow. And so when they're watered, a lot of these stores watering overhead, lavender doesn't like wet feet. It doesn't like to be in a lot of water. And what's happening is, is there's no airflow, there's too much moisture, and that's just a perfect breeding ground for fungal disease. And I think this botrytis, which I will double check it and put it up on the screen, um, is happening where the leaves, the, the leaves start to gray out and it affects the branches as well. And next thing you know, you've got these weak little branches. So what I've done with a couple of them and I'll show you because they're looking pretty good. So this one looked exactly like the other one. 
but a little bit healthier. I think the other one may be a little too far gone. And what I did was I went in and I took all the soil out, repotted them in uh, potting soil with a little bit of biotone starter fertilizer. And then I just kind of went in and clipped all of the dead branches and sprayed the roots with neem oil, sprayed the outside with neem oil and put them in the sun and didn't really water them for about a week because the roots needed to dry out and the plant needed some time. And look, it's pushing new growth. So that's encouraging. So with all of the plants up here, uh, like I said, I wanna go in and clean them up a bit, uh, check the soil, check their root system, maybe give them a little bit of uh, neem oil spray on their roots and just around the base, just a preventative measure. But with the lavender, I'm gonna go in a little bit more uh, hard on them because I'm gonna have to prune off a lot of the infected branches and stems and I'm gonna clean off as much soil as I can and use fresh soil and check their roots uh, for any like rotting or infection. Give the roots a good spray give the base a good spray and then uh, repot them and just kind of let them settle for a week or so in the sunshine. And I will move them to a protected area like the front porch that has like that overhang if there's any uh, rain in the forecast because I want the, I want the lavender the roots to kind of dry out a little bit because like I said, lavender doesn't like to be wet. It likes a little drink of water and then it likes to dry out and then a little drink of water and dry out. And I don't think that happened, but hopefully we can fix it all. Okay, so I'm just gonna set up a few cameras and get to work. And I'll explain what I'm doing as I go along too. Okay, here we go. <laughs> First, I'm gonna start by clearing all of these plants off the table so we have uh, more room to work with. Okay guys, before we start, I just wanted to say that there is construction going on uh, at our neighbor's house. So if you hear like saws and hammering, I apologize, but that's just what's happening. Also, the wind is picking up a little bit too. So I'm really hoping that this audio comes out nice and clean for you. But so we are gonna start with the limelight hydrangeas. And like I said, I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna use I've got my pruners and I've got my little tiny nippers and I'm just gonna go in and inspect everything. I'm gonna trim off any dead leaves and branches. Then I'm gonna lift it up and inspect the roots and the soil, make sure that it's not like waterlogged or the roots down towards the bottom are root bound or rotting. And then I will uh, put it back in its nursery container. These hydrangeas are going to be planted in the front flower bed that we uh, took apart or disassembled or transplanted. Um, we did that in a video, in a previous video. So these three limelights are gonna go over there. So I'm not going to uh, worry too much about replacing the soil with fresh potting soil because it's just gonna be like a week or so for them to get into the ground. And so I can pretty much handle watering and everything from there. So I'm just gonna go in and just start cleaning everything up. And I'm gonna leave the tag on them too because I just wanna make sure I know exactly what variety I've got when I go to plant them. Hi, Shushu. And I think I'm just going to start from the bottom and work my way up. Thank you. 
and I'm not going uh, all the way down to the end of the stem because there is life in these stems. They've got new buds coming up. I'm just going up to right around the first node and just nipping it off. So uh, a lot of this dead stuff just gets removed and isn't sitting there decaying on there. I wanna get you guys a closer look at exactly what I'm doing. So here is a new branch coming out right here. And down towards the base, there's new buds and new uh, leaves coming out. So this is still very active and alive. So I don't wanna go in here and snip it because I've got growth coming out. But I do wanna get rid of this dead stuff right here. And you can see where it's starting to change color. And right there, there is another little node right there. And I'm hoping that a new set of leaves will come from that. So I'm going to cut just above that. And get rid of this. And you can even look right in there and you can see it's still alive. It's got a white center and there's green all the way around it. So that is a healthy, healthy stem. Or branch and that's basically what I'm going and doing all the way around and for something like this where I've got a lot of top growth but not too much down towards the bottom I'm just going to pull some of these leaves off and just keep an eye on these branches and just see what they do but here's another one where <coughs> Shui wants to say hi <laughs> There is another stem or branch coming off of this right here. There's a new growth point right there and it's got some new leaves on it. And then you go up here and it's kind of dead. So I'm just gonna go down to this node right there and you can see it's got like a little uh, darker tinged uh, uh, rim going around it. I'm gonna go right above that and snip that and get rid of it. And that looks like it does have some life left in it too. So I'll just keep an eye on that too. I wanna to show you one more just in case. So here is this stem that goes all the way down to the base to one of the main branches. There's new growth coming out from the base. And as you kind of go upwards, there's a little bit of new growth on the backside here. But then you get up here and you can see it's starting to change color and it's getting a lot browner and limper. And then where these leaves are, they've just kind of shriveled up. So you can see it's starting to die back. So what I'm gonna do is on this one, because it's dying back right next to this little node right here, I think I'm just gonna go right below it and snip it. And that's it. And then just the same all the way around. That's a broken branch. Okay. And any leaves that are partially uh, crisped up or brown, I'm gonna get rid of them too. Also, if you're unsure uh, about uh, the leaves, if they're completely dead or not, I would just make it a good habit to use your pruners and, and just nip the leaves off. Because if there's a little bit of life left in them and you try to pull them off, you may end up uh, skinning part of the branch and that just exposes the stem to uh, infection and infestation and whatnot. So you don't wanna do that. And depending on how this root system looks after I finish pruning it, I may come in and take some of these tops off just so it doesn't have so much foliage to take care of and it can kind of focus on uh, strengthening its roots. They're all caught in the tag. 
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the pruning that I did. I know it looks a little wonky and lopsided over here, but there's a lot of new growth that's flushing out on these stems. So I think once it gets in the ground and has a chance to root in and get settled, I think it's gonna just kind of fill in on its own. Um, so now I'm just gonna go in and inspect the soil and the roots. Actually, it looks really good. It doesn't look root bound. Um, it looks like it needs a little bit of water, but not too bad. I have been watering it and it's got a nice healthy root system. They're white, they're not rotting. It doesn't smell like it's rotting. So I am just going to put this back in its container because everything looks good. I will put this back in here too because it does have some fertilizer in it. And then I'll just water it in and put it in some sun. So I'm gonna go and do the rest of the hydrangeas and then when we get to the salvias, I will come back around and show you what I'm doing with those. Hi. <laughs> okay, let's get to work. Hydrangeas look good. There was no signs of root rot or fungal issues. I didn't see any pests or insects or anything flying around the soil. Um, and overall, they looked really good. They got a nice little haircut. Uh, mostly it was a lot of just uh, dead leaves and a few broken branches. Um, so it wasn't too bad. Now I'm gonna move on to the two butterfly bushes. And with these, I'm just gonna kind of go about the same way. I'm gonna clean off some of the dead and yellowing leaves, um, any broken branches, I'll get rid of them. And then I'll take them out of their containers and check the soil, check the roots, because butterfly bushes are very prone to like root rot. They don't like sitting in wet soil, boggy soil. So I just wanna check them and make sure they're okay. And these are the Pugster series. So they're a dwarf variety. They only get about two feet tall and wide. So there's really not too much pruning that you need to do on them. Uh, just kind of like your uh, Macrophylla hydrangeas and stuff. You just kind of want to clean up uh, any disease, dead and broken branches and just kind of let them be. So that's what I'm going to do. Right there, I've got a branch right here. Let me show you. So this branch right here, while it does have new growth coming in, it is attached to this that is split in half. So I don't really want to keep anything that's exposed. So for this, as much as I hate to do it, I'm just going to come in here and remove it because that's what was there and I wanted to get rid of it. All 
the soil and everything looks really good and it doesn't smell or anything. The roots look good. So I think for now I'm going to leave them in this soil in their containers because I am hoping to get these in the ground in the next week or two. So with, with the salvias, they are, they look really good actually. They don't look too bad. They do look like they need a little bit of water. So they smell good. There's no root rot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and just get rid of a lot of these uh, dead branches and leaves that are sitting right against the soil. Cause what they're doing is they're just collecting on the top layer of soil. So there's really no air circulation on these plants. There's just soil, a mat of dead leaves, and then the foliage. And that's where I think some of the potential problems could arise. So I'm just gonna kind of go in, clean everything up, and remove some of the spent blooms, and water them in. An easy way to kind of get rid of a lot of the debris in there is to take it out of its container and just use your finger and lightly scrape off a little bit of that top layer. So you can kind of get in there and get some of those leaves out. Cause that'll just kind of get some more air circulating, especially in the center of the plant. And I just went in and removed some of the dead and damaged leaves throughout the canopy. And it's looking a lot better. It'll definitely, definitely rebound a little faster too once I get it in the ground. But again, these are gonna be in their containers for just a couple more weeks. Soil looks good, roots look good. Smelling the, they smell fine, smells like soil. This is the White Wands Veronica's and I'm gonna do to them what I did to the salvias. I'm just gonna go in here, I'm gonna remove all of the dead foliage and branches cut back any dead disease damaged branches, uh, scrape off a little bit of the top soil, uh, take it out of its container, check the roots, make sure they look okay, they feel okay, they smell okay, and clean it up. I may cut them back a little bit. Uh, these I'm probably gonna cut off, but they are flushing out uh, new blooms here. So I'm just gonna go in and get rid of the dead ones, but it's gonna be the same process as everything else. All right, guys, I've got everything done. The hydrangeas, the salvias, the veronicas, they're all cleaned up and everything looked good. The soil didn't um, look bad, infected, moldy, anything. So I didn't replace any of that because I am hoping to get them in the ground very soon. So now I'm just going to put everything onto my cart and wheel it back out into the sun before I start working on the lavender. But everything does look pretty good. You can see, look at all that. They look nice and healthy. I will show you overall too. Also, the the little tree, the little arborvitae, I didn't really mess with it too much. The soil looked fine and it was well watered. Um, I will give it another drink of water because it will be going back out into the full sun, but there was really not much for me to do to it. The, the foliage looked fine. It just needs to get in the ground, acclimate and fill in. Now we're gonna do the lavender, and this is probably the worst one of the bunch, so I wanted to start with it and show you, got there's gnats everywhere, <laughs> and show you what I did to a few of them. I did half of these already uh, a few, about a week or two ago, and a few of them have flushed back with new growth. A couple of them I think I did lose, but let me show you step-by-step step what I did. 
So the fungal disease that I believe this has is Botrysis SPP or SSP. I think it's Botrysis SPP. I'm going to put a link in the description box uh, of this video for the article that I read up on all of this. I believe it was from the Gardner Report. Um, and it was very informative and I actually learned a lot from it. So I'm going to put a link there because it had a lot of information there. But so what I'm going to do now is I am going to remove it from its canister. And you can kind of see it's already kind of falling apart here. I am just going to toss this soil. And then what I did before is... I sprayed the canister with the neem oil max everywhere and just kind of let it dry. And this is the neem max. It's a little bit stronger than the neem oil, but it's also, and it's an insecticide, a fungicide, a miticide, and a net nematicide. So it does um, work on the, the specific uh, fungus, Botrysis. So I'm really happy about that. And I sprayed the canister and now I am going to go in here and you can see the root system here is pretty much shot. It's weak. It doesn't smell bad. It's not rotting. I just think it's waterlogged and stressed. So because the roots are struggling and stressed out, what I did is I went in and I literally just gave it a haircut and got a lot of these wimpy, wispy roots off because they're really not doing the plant any good. Uh, they're not able to support the root, the, the stem and all of the branches and they could be a little bit infected. So I just want to kind of clean it all up. Now I am going to spray everything, the roots, the stems, everything with the neem oil. Because this has been affected so severely, I'm going to, I'm actually going to come in here and I'm just going to cut all that dead stuff off. Kind of like what you do uh, in the springtime when it starts to flush new growth. You just kind of come in and just cap it, nap it, whatever. <laughs> you just kind of shear it all the way back to the new growth and it kind of flushes back. That's what I'm kind of hoping this is going to do. This one does look a little bit more severely damaged. I'm hoping it rebounds, but kind of like these two, I think these may be goners, but... It's worth a try. So now that this has been sprayed and cleaned up, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some fresh potting mix with a little bit of starter fertilizer. And then I'm just going to repot this back in here and put it in the sun and not really water it for at least a week or so just to kind of let everything dry out because this has pretty much been waterlogged and I think it just needs, it needs a little bit of time to recover. And then after about a week or so, I will come in and just give it a light drink of water and just kind of keep an eye on it. And that's what I'm gonna do for all of them. And then I'm gonna come back around and I'll show you the finished product. guys here are all of our rescue plants I brought them out to the front 
by the sidewalk and the driveway because this area does get uh, sun pretty much uh, all day. Not all day, but most of the day. And I think this is going to be really, really beneficial for all these plants. So over here, we've got the limelight hydrangeas and the little lime. And then over here, we've got the buddleias and a few of the salvias. And don't they just look so much better? Like just getting all of that gunk, those leaves and dead and broken branches out of there. Look at how much airflow they all have, especially the little lime hydrangea. That thing was filled with uh, dead branches, leaves, broken branches. And so I think these are just looking really good. And I think they're going to rebound. Uh, you can come in here and like, just look at all of that, like new growth that is already pushing. So I'm just really happy about these. And then over here, we have our Veronica and our Lavender. And I put these all out here so they can get full sun. I did go in and crop the blooms off them. I just kind of deadheaded them because they were so leggy and long and flopping. So I just was like, no, let's just get rid of them. And some of the lavender didn't look as bad as I thought. So I pretty much left it. I think like this one over here may just be a little dehydrated, but you can see they all are hopefully going to rebound, or at least some of them. But I did go in and plant, after I trimmed them up, I did plant them up a little bit higher um, than the soil level because I kind of sort of wanted to, kind of like what I do with most everything around here, I plant it a little bit higher and then kind of make a little hill so water runs away from the trunk of the plants because it's just not good to have all that in water. Look, we've already got a, can you see that? There's a bumblebee. I don't know if you can see it. Little bumblebee, already enjoying it. And I just put these out here a few minutes ago. Okay, so back to the lavender. What I was saying is that I did plant them a little bit higher and just let the soil kind of flow downwards, kind of like a little hill, just to keep water and everything away from the trunk of the plants. All right, our little bumblebee friend has found the Veronica. The lavender I am gonna let sit out here for probably a week before I go and give it a drink of water, but I did check the weather and we are supposed to get rain in like six days. So I may just let the rain kind of water them in, depending on how much. If we end up with too much rain, I will probably move them underneath the front porch right here where it's protected because again, I don't want them sitting and soaking up too much water. Okay guys, so just to recap our project here today, we took a bunch of plants from the clearance rack that were gonna to be tossed out, um, brought them home, and just basically gave them a little TLC, cleaned them up, checked out their roots, trimmed them, gave them some water and some light, and they should rebound. The hydrangeas were actually a lot better than I thought. They just needed their, uh, branches trimmed up, the broken branches. There weren't any diseased ones. There was a lot of dead leaves in there. I did pull every single plant out of its container and check the root ball. The hydrangeas didn't show any signs of being root bound. They didn't uh, smell funny. There wasn't any root rot in there. So I basically just kind of trimmed them all up and watered them all in. The salvia and the veronica, same thing. They just needed some cleaning up, some getting rid of all of that dead foliage that was in the middle of the plant because they weren't getting sufficient air. And that's what was kind of turning those leaves a little bit yellow and brown. They were just not being able to breathe, basically. So we cleaned all those up. The Veronica, I did 
take all of the blooms off of it because they were a little leggy and they were just flopping over. So I just kind of cut it all back and they can just flush out another set of blooms and there was already bumblebees out there. So they found them. So <laughs> that's a good thing. And with the lavender, the lavender was probably the biggest issue because it had that fungal disease. So like I said, I went in there, I took each plant out of its container I sprayed neem oil all over the container, got rid of a lot of the soil, checked the root ball, make sure there wasn't any root rot, cut a bunch of the roots out, trimmed a bunch of the infected foliage, sprayed the whole thing down with the neem oil, and we're talking, it was almost like a drench basically, inside the middle of the plant, the soil, the stems, the branches, the base, everything got drenched. And then I repotted them with fresh potting soil mixed in with some starter fertilizer and now I just put them in the sun for a little bit and I'm gonna just let them kind of dry out for about a week. Like I said, we are supposed to get some rain in about six or seven days. So depending on the amount of rain that we do get, will determine if I leave them out there on the sidewalk, like right in the, by the driveway, or if I bring them under the front porch where it's protected from the rain. Because lavender, again, doesn't like to be wet or in wet soil. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for coming along with me on this adventure today. Um, as I said before, I love getting plants from the clearance racks and bringing them home, rescuing them, giving them a little TLC, and just watching them rebound and recover and then thrive. The lavender is probably the one that I am the most concerned about just because it did have the fungal issue, but hopefully uh, it does recover and start to thrive and just push out a whole new set of leaves. And I just, I can't wait to see uh, what it's gonna do. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.